Hello, I'm Microsoft MVP Tom Morgan. Now, obviously, we're all really excited about the Windows 11 announcements that have just come out and also about how Microsoft Teams is going to be embedded right inside uh, Microsoft Windows and be available on that taskbar as well. Uh, kind of can't wait to look forward to all that sort of stuff. But I do want to dig into something interesting that happened on the back of that announcement around the move um, from Electron to WebView 2. So if you don't know what this is, um, immediately after the announcement, Rish Tandon, so he's CVP um, for kind of Teams engineering. I think he kind of sits at the top of that kind of Microsoft Teams engineering tree. Um, he uh, tweeted that uh, there's making some changes with this change to bring a version of Teams into Windows. They're moving away from Electron, they're moving to WebView 2, and they're also uh, moving from Angular to React. So a couple of things to dig into there about what does that actually mean those changes. So I'm going to focus really on the Electron to WebView 2 one because the Angular to React, I mean, that's a development technology um, and it, the outcome is kind of the same. You know, if you're a developer, you're, you know, you, you've got to learn some new things to go from Angular to React. There, there's some differences, um, but but fundamentally they're achieving the same thing. Um, Electron to WebView 2 is kind of slightly different though, and that's why I want to talk about it. Okay, so if you don't know, Electron is what Teams is currently using today. And Electron is a, a wrapper. It allows developers to take what they've already built for the web and package it inside a desktop application that is then cross-platform, works on Windows, Linux, and Mac without developers needing to write specific versions for all of those platforms or indeed a specific version for desktop. Because it's that wrapper, it... it it makes it much, much quicker to take what you've already built for the web and it kind of runs anywhere. That's the that's the aim. And it does that by providing like an abstraction over the desktop, providing hooks into things like devices changing or um, provides a place to do screen pop-ups or um, notifications and stuff like that that is not very specific to the operating system that the application is running on. So that's what Electron is. It um, those kind of the pros, if you like. On the cons side, uh, it has been criticised for being kind of quite process and system intensive in terms of memory usage and RAM. Um, and you kind of get that with um, abstractions. That's, that's one of the things with abstractions is, you know, they are going to be more system intensive. They are going to take more processing because you're taking one thing and turning it into another in real time. You're providing an abstraction over the desktop um, that is not true. Uh, and you're providing this this look, uh, this um, this view of the world, if you like, to your application um, that is the same across all different platforms and all different um, systems. Uh, and, and so there's some translation work that needs to happen. The Teams client, the Teams team, are moving away from Electron and they're moving to something called WebView 2. Well, what is WebView 2? Is it like Electron? Is it a wrapper technology? No, it's not. WebView 2 is something really different. It's just, it's a control. So... When you're building applications, let's say you're building a Windows application, like a Win32 application, desktop application. Traditionally, you do that by adding controls to your application. And a control can be a window, it can be a text box, it can be a label. If you've built up anything in um, like Microsoft Access, you know, that's had a designer in it where you added in like text boxes. If you've done any Power BI, same thing when you're adding visuals onto the page, those are just controls. And WebView 2 is just a control. Um, it's a control like all of the others, like, like, text bo like, like text boxes, like buttons, like labels. Why is WebView 2 different? It's a control that renders web pages. Okay, And even that's not that different. There was a WebView before that. And even before that, there was, uh, what was it called? It was called, um, I can't even remember now, uh, Web Browser. It was called Web Browser Control. Um, so back in the day, there was a web browser control which re rendered web pages using the old Trident um, IE code base. Then there was WebView, which used the uh, Microsoft Edge, the original Microsoft Edge rendering engine. And now we've got WebView 2, which uses the Chromium rendering engine. So you can see how the Teams team are going to use WebView 2 to host the Microsoft Teams application. Now, there's an awful lot of work that needs to happen now because you've taken a wrapper technology like Electron and you've replaced it with something that just renders web pages. So there's all of the abstraction bit needs to be written in. Now, the team will do that, 
but they'll do it as part of an application. So what, does, what this means is that the Microsoft Teams client is going to become a Windows 32 application. You know, it's going to be built as a Windows application in something like .NET um, or you know, .NET Core or, or something similar, or even C++, I think, where Vue 2 works in. But the, the fundamental shift here is away from that abstraction technology to a native application that is rendering teams inside a control. Um, what does that mean? Uh, well, it means that there's a place now for the Teams team to write code that is client-side. In fact, they're going to have to write a lot of code to do that abstraction. Either they're going to have to change the web parts of Teams a lot, um, or maybe they're just going to write that abstraction to make it feel like or appear to the to the web part of Teams that that it's still Electron under the hood. Probably a little bit of both. But all those things like devices changing, um, being able to show screen notifications and screen pops, um, all of those things will happen on the client side code now. But this brings some advantages because some of the things that have been really hard to do in Electron, like multiple windows, spanning multiple windows, um, things like that, uh, spanning multiple displays, uh, that becomes much, much easier because that's just something you can solve natively you know, with a native application. So in terms of does this change lots of things or does this change not lots of things, I think it's going to be up to the Microsoft team. Um, I think the minimal implementation will not change very much because the minimal implementation is just to provide that same abstraction layer um, in the application to the web view um, and uh, just host teams in the web view browser. However, I don't think they'll stop there. I think the power of having a native application will mean that they can do so many more things that they can't do today. And I think we'll see them bring forward technologies and innovations um, that are specific to the desktop client. And that's kind of quite interesting because we haven't really had any really specific um, innovations that are targeted to just particular clients or particular devices. So what does this mean for Mac OS? What does this mean for Linux? Well, um, one of the reasons for having Electron was that the Teams team wouldn't have to rewrite applications for these different platforms. And right now, today, WebView 2 does not work on Mac OS and Linux. So what's going to happen? Well, we know that the WebView team are working on support for Mac OS and Linux. And for me, that's the most likely scenario. Um, WebView 2 will start supporting Mac and Linux. Then it doesn't matter. Then we're back to a single code base, a single application. Um, it will be built on WebView 2, and it will just be compiled for Mac OS and for Linux. I think that probably will be the case. Um, I think there might still be some things that end up being specific just to Windows machines, but we'll have to wait and see. The other options are kind of not great. They would be telling Mac and Linux users they've got to use the web-based um, uh, version of Teams only, and they don't have a desktop client anymore, and I don't think that'll be great. And the other one is to kind of keep both clients going, keep the Electron go one going just for Mac OS and Linux. Again, I don't see them doing that. Um, they don't want to maintain multiple code bases and multiple applications going forward. So uh, I th my guess is that the WebView 2 one is going to evolve and is going to build over time, build even on top of what we've seen in the Windows 11 concept um, screenshots in the demonstrations. Uh, right now, the it's going to I think we're going to see more and more of that stuff go into WebView 2 and eventually replace Electron. That's kind of my gut feel. Don't know. We'll have to wait and see. All right, so other things to consider. What about clients using VDI, so virtualized desktop infrastructure? Um, if it's working today in Electron, it should probably work OK um, when it moves over to WebView 2, because actually, it's still going to be a Windows application. It's going to be a standard Win32 application. In fact, in some ways, it's easier um, because it's more native, but I mean, fundamentally, no real difference. There is one thing that might, be, um, might change, though, just because of the way WebView 2 works. You know in um, Edge and Chrome, when you open a new tab, I don't know if you've noticed this, you get a new process running in Task Manager. So that each tab gets a new process. The Chromium rendering engine creates a process just for rendering that page. Well, it's the same thing with WebView 2. Every WebView 2 control starts a new process to render. Um, and that's going to be the case. And there are some issues with doing that with um, Citrix so and Citrix hooks. There's a, um, there's a workaround to disable it. So if you um, go and look up Citrix CTX107825, that talks about how to disable on a per application basis Citrix hooks. 
So you need to do that for whatever the process name is that spins up on WebView 2. So right now it's called MS Edge WebView 2.exe. That might change um, when Teams comes out using WebView 2. They might have their own name, which you can have to wait and see on that. But just be aware, like it's worth testing inside a Citrix environment. And if you're hit pro hitting problems with hooks, then um, the, there is a workaround to disable hooks on a per application basis. Okay. So what does this mean for Electron then? Because you know, you might be looking at this and thinking, well, Teams is Microsoft's biggest bet right now, and they've just moved away from Electron. So what does this mean for Electron? Is Electron dead? Are Microsoft going to kill it? Because remember, Microsoft own Electron now. They own, uh, Electron is uh, owned and maintained by GitHub, and Microsoft now own GitHub. So technically, Electron belongs to Microsoft. So are they just going to kill it now that they're not using it? I don't think so. Um, for, for the first, well, for one thing, um, Electron is still being used by lots of Microsoft products, uh, not least of which my, uh, video, Visual Studio Code is built in Electron, for instance. And then there's lots of other um, applications using Electron today, even Slack um, and Twitch. And um, I think the web app, uh, the, the WhatsApp um, desktop app is built in Electron. So lots and lots of Electron based applications. And I don't think this announcement from the Teams team means that Electron is bad in any way. Um, I think Electron is still a really good solution. It still completely has its place for um, bringing web applications back down to the desktop and making them easier to consume from the desktop, making them more powerful. It's just that Teams has got really big. It's got really complicated and complex. It does some weird things, like it does some very specific things in terms of audio and video. Um, it's, it's just too complicated for what Electron is and for the abstraction technology that Electron offers. It makes more sense for the Teams team to have a native client to offload some of that work on, to offload some of that processing on, and to do things that they can't currently do in Electron. I think that's the reason, rather than Electron being bad. It's just, it just, Teams got too big um, for what Electron is, and it's not a good fit anymore. So for me, that's what I think is happening. I don't think we're going to see Microsoft kill Electron anytime soon. Um, I think they're just going to leave it be completely as is. It's just that Teams will walk away from it. What about client SDKs? So Microsoft Teams doesn't have a desktop client SDK today. It's something that has been asked for ever since Teams launched. There's a really high voted user voice item on it, um, but it really, there's been no activity for you know over a year now. Um, it's just been, we're reviewing possibilities. We have nothing to add, um, got no dates. Well, you know, And that's kind of interesting because it's really highly voted. So Microsoft are kind of, choosing not to do something that is really popular and has been asked around for a long time. So why is that? Well, it might be technical. So the reason could be that it's too hard to do it today in Electron. Um, and so Microsoft are holding off until that problem gets solved. And if it does get solved with a, a, a more native application, maybe that makes it easier to build a desktop client SDK. So maybe we will see a desktop client SDK coming. But that presumes that the reason for not doing the SDK was purely technical. And that might not be true. Um, there might be good non-technical reasons why Microsoft don't want to create a desktop client SDK. So for instance, um, they they might prefer, they might want to keep applications inside Teams. So the, the Teams-based application model is really strong um, today in Microsoft Teams. There's lots of exciting applications. There's lots of functionality you can do with Teams apps. And all of those applications work really well on mobile. I don't know if Microsoft really wants to have another surface for building applications that is not compatible with mobile, only would work on Windows-based desktop PCs. So I don't know. Um, having said that, we are seeing some movements for specific functionality for specific devices. So um, I think we've seen some stuff in the mobile space around GPS support and QR code reading. Those are things that don't make any sense to desktop applications, but they've got in anyway, and they are specifically for mobile-based applications. So we might see something that is specific for desktop-based applications in a similar way. Um, that precedent has been set now, so it's not impossible. I think we're just going to have to wait and see, see what it looks like when it comes out, and then reassess when we have this um, more native Teams application, um, we can come back and say, okay, what what does the SDK story look like now? How accessible is this application? Um, has it got hooks that we can use? So, I what does this mean for users? 
you know, people who use Teams on a daily basis, I don't think there's going to be huge amounts of change. So remember that most of the functionality that makes Teams what it is today is built in the web side of things. You know, you get that same experience when you go to teams.microsoft.com as you do when you're using it in the desktop. And none of that is going to change. I mean, it might change and it will change over time because the Teams team are, you know, constantly working on this stuff. But the Electron to WebView 2 change doesn't really affect that stuff. Um, I think you might see faster load times, you might see better performance, things like that you'll see. Um, and then over time, I think we might see things coming to the desktop version um, that have been made possible uh, because of it running locally, because of them, uh, the Teams team being able to invoke code locally on the machine. Uh, not just performance improvements, I think we might see kind of technical breakthroughs as well. Don't really know what, but we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of blown away that they've managed to do things like background blur, you know, through Electron and in the web and in iOS everywhere. So if they could do that, like who knows what they could do, you know, if they had full control of a native application running on Windows. So we're going to have to wait and see. Yes. And so, again, just to kind of conclude, I guess, I don't think this is a bad slight on electron or anything like that it's just the wrong the wrong solution for the problem now you know the problem has changed it's a very different place you know when teams first came out in 2017 or something you know as a kind of persistent chat tool um like it's now in a completely different place from where it was it's become the operating system for work and, and it's it's completely kind of outgrown that tool now so um, I'm excited to see what the rewrite does. I'm excited to see what it does before, for performance, but also kind of the, the new innovations that will come out of it. Okay, I hope that's helped explain the difference between Electron and WebView 2 and what we can expect. Um, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you again next time.